Welcome back, Mac 2320. We're hitting up chapter 34. We're talking about variable voltage and magnetic clutches. Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple different kinds of motors uh, and why we use variable voltage in different requirements uh, that we're going to go through uh, when we take a look at these. Okay, so where do we apply variable voltage to? Well, mainly it's single phase motors, okay, that are fractional horsepower motors. And the goal is we change the speed because we are varying the voltage. Now that does not vary the speed of the field. So don't, um, don't think that the speed of the field is changing. We're changing the voltage and the voltage is weakening the field. And therefore by the field being weakened, that's how we're controlling the speed of the rotor. Okay, so we're not changing the speed of the field. We're changing the voltage and the voltage is changing the strength of the field and the field becomes weaker. So that's how we control the speed. Okay, but fractional horsepower motors, that's the ones that we want to use on uh, light loads um, because, you know, some of the downfalls to these type of motors is um, they have a very uh, high impedance with them. Okay, so since they have such a high impedance, uh, they have a hard time starting out with a lot of torque. So we don't use these motors that need high torque uh, because they start with high impedance. So another reason uh, why you would or would not choose this type of motor, okay? Another motor that works with this though, that where we vary the voltage, okay, um, are your universal motors, okay? Universal motors can run on AC or DC, and you're gonna see a lot of those, like, you know, uh, I got pictured here. So a lot of your electrical handheld tools are doing that we are varying the voltage right because you know if you have a drill you can set that drill to multiple different speeds you know whether you want to um, or different torques I guess is what I'm saying so you know you put your drill on if you want to drill holes but if it's one that can handle screwdrivers right you usually got like a 1 to 20 setting you know based on your torque well, what you're doing is you're adjusting the speed on that as well. There's also usually another speed switch if you want to run in speed one or speed two. All right, think about an electric uh, weed eater that's pictured in the middle there. So what really happens is, you know, uh, you have like the little throttle switch that you use, you know, with your fingers to control the speed. So what you're doing there is you're varying the voltage uh, by doing that. So and you're varying the speed at which it rotates around and cuts. All right. Now your vacuum is more of a constant speed, but it's an AC type series motor. There are brushes, there are brushes on that motor. Okay, so I had to take apart a vacuum almost identical to that one in the picture and replace the brushes on it. Okay, so um, you know it works for a lot of things. Now, if we have motors that have centrifugal switches, um, we cannot use that. Okay, uh, to disconnect the starter motor. So we got to be careful uh, with what we have there. All right, so different types of methods that we use to do that is an auto transformer with a sliding tap. That's the most efficient and probably the best method, but it's also the most expensive, okay? So if you notice, you got the little dial on there and that's the sliding tap. So as you turn the dial, you're changing where you're tapping into that main transformer and you're strengthening the, the voltage right there or decreasing the voltage, which is in turn affecting the strength of the field, okay? You can also use a triac. We've talked about a triac before. Um, it's pictured down below. It's an SCR, which is a silicon controlled rectifier. So with that, okay, we're able to, you know, control the positive and the negative portions of the waveform when we do that. You know, rectifier, just remember, you know, that's when we're taking AC and going to DC. So that's really what that's doing is it's creating a DC pulse. Uh, from those from that portion of the wave so you can see in the middle of the screen here all right that's an SCR conducting you know a half of a waveform and since we're taking half of that AC waveform it's actually producing a DC pulse for us okay so that's one way that we can you know control the the voltage which in turn is controlling the field for us and you can see the auto transformer uh, in there that's a cut away from the previous side okay where we can turn the dial and it slides most expensive method though, yeah, because you actually literally have a really large piece that you have to mount in uh, there as well. So just uh, other things that you have to think about as you're doing this, okay? And here's what a triac would look like uh, schematically, all right? And then, you know, 
more of a jerry-rigged looking kind of triac over there as well um, but you know it's about being able to control the the voltage speed so you can see you know all the different parts and pieces on that rectifier and how it filters okay using solid state device it filters that ac signal to get us or rectifies that you know so that we get our dc pulse out of there that we want okay so uh, we can also use magnetic clutches okay so we use clutches to engage and disengage when we need to uh, if we want to to disengage so we don't want a motor to start actually turning into a generator and generating electricity you know if we if we had a fan that uh, needed gravity to slow down and we left it engaged that fan would actually turn into a generator so we disengage a fan with like a magnetic clutch okay when we do that uh, so that uh, we use gravity to slow it down and it's disengaged from the the rotor and the, the fields so that it won't generate electricity okay because there's not a big difference between a generator and a motor. Uh, one's just, you know, if we remember from electrical class where, you know, a motor's taking electrical energy and turning it into mechanical energy and then are going the other way, a generator, we're taking mechanical energy and turning it into electrical energy. So, you know, if we had a fan that was going full speed, full speed and we turn it off and we let gravity slow it down, okay, it's taking that mechanical energy of it rotating and actually you know, changing the current in the fields in back in starting to generate uh, inside the housing of the motor, okay? So uh, we use magnetic clutches, you know, to use a lot more for safety and things like that. All right, and then, uh, you know, lastly, we have eddy current clutches, okay? So remember, eddy current, they're those little currents, uh, they just kind of go in a small little circular pattern. We've talked about it multiple times. Uh, you get it when you white water raft, right? You get a little eddy current that you sit there it's kind of like a little whirlpool that sits there and kind of goes in a nice little circular motion. Same kind of thing with our eddy current, okay? So we can use uh, slip wings, slip rings and windings. And we actually wrote, uh, put the rotor uh, inside a metal drum there, okay? And it's the input of the clutch and that's what's actually connected to the AC motor, okay? So that's the, the motor is actually providing the turning force there, okay? So there are some advantages to having the eddy current uh, clutch, okay? The biggest one is there's no mechanical connection when we use an eddy current clutch, okay? So that, remember for maintenance and taking care of things, there's less things that can go wrong when we're using an eddy current clutch, uh, you know, mechanically that can break. So not having those mechanical parts and pieces actually touching uh, is an advantage of the eddy current clutch. All right, and this is just kind of a cutaway of some of the motors or, or taking a look so that you kind of see know what they look like and how they they impact there's a couple of good pictures in the book too I want you to make sure that you uh, you know take a look at that will kind of really give you a good idea or a sense of you know what's going on um, you know I would look at uh, on page uh, 360 in your book and we took a look take a look at figure uh, 34 6 and it'll kind of help you understand you know what what the clutch actually looks like same with the uh, figure page uh, 361 if you're looking at figure 34-8. A couple of good pictures that actually kind of help piece you. The one in the upper left hand corner is 34-8 uh, actually from your book, but the one that you want to kind of see is 34-6. I didn't have a picture of it to put in here, uh, but I'd like you guys to maybe go back and take a look at it so you can kind of see, you know, how that clutch is actually engaging and in, in working inside there. Uh, very kind of cool to see how it lays out there, but you know, that's, that's the whole point. So, uh, remember, when we're talking about variable voltage and magnetic clutches, what are we doing? We, uh, you know, we're using a clutch to engage and disengage the speed and, and, and actually engage, you know, just the shaft in general. But when we're, the whole point is when we're varying the voltage, okay, we're not changing the speed of the field. We are simply weakening the field, which is what's making the motor slow down. So just, you know, advantage there. Remember, this is all for fractional horsepower motors. You're not going to have like a... Uh, 250 horsepower motor that's going to have, you know, variable voltage on it, okay, for that kind of sake of things. All right, uh, as usual, guys, uh, email me if you have any questions, else I will see you in class.